Hello and welcome to the driving range here at the Abu Dhabi Golf Club for the first European Tour event in this memorable Desert Swing series and a very significant one, a very special one for the Abu Dhabi HSBC Golf Championship. It's the 10th edition of this great championship. I'm delighted to be joined by the Director of Instruction here at the club, Danny Jakabowski. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of the players on show here in Abu Dhabi this week. What may happen in an event that really has become a tale of expect the unexpected. We saw last year Pablo Larathabal becoming the third unheralded player to lift this great Falcon Trophy. Danny, are we going to see a change in that trend for 2015? Or will we see another relative unheralded player once again triumph on Sunday? Well, Robbie, thanks. I, I guess the big thing is that uh, traditionally this has unearthed some new talent. I think everyone wants to see the big guns up there. But, you know, we love a Cinderella story and there's been some good results the last few years. So, uh, look, I'd like to see some new talent come up through the ranks, uh, but I'd like to see them tested by the big boys as well. Absolutely, and there's plenty of big boys here. Rory McIlroy, the world number one, is spearheading the field. World number two, Henrik Stenson. Both of those guys have actually finished runner-up at this tournament. And we have a newcomer as well in Ricky Fowler, where all bar Paul Casey of the past champions are here, Abu Dhabi. Um, it's very special, isn't it? Because it's always a great field. HSBC have been on board since 2010, and they've actually changed the profile of this event, haven't they? Not just with the tournament, but also with what they do with the Championship Village. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the whole week is, is obviously fantastic, and it keeps improving year to year. And, I mean, ironically, I was actually on the driving range not even half an hour ago watching uh, Chris DeMarco, who was the first ever winner. And let me tell you, he, he has still got it. He can still hit the golf ball. I wasn't expecting much, but uh, yeah, he's, he's still quite impressive. As far as the tournament goes, I think um, you'd probably say this, this golf course is almost purpose-built for this event. Um, you know, the pros love coming here. There's, there's been some changes to the golf course, which we'll talk about uh, later on, obviously, but uh, it, it really is a fantastic week. The players love it. The spectators love it. And uh, yeah, let's see some fireworks. We'll talk a little bit about world number one Rory McIlroy coming here off the back of just a sensational year. Last year he won two major championships, his first world golf championship event, the European Tour's flagship tournament, the BMW PGA at Wentworth, in a year that just, well, after the trials and tribulations of 2013, really was something quite special for him. A big favourite here this week, Danny, because he has come runner-up three times. Now, one of those occasions was an eight-shot deficit to Martin Keimer, the most dominant player who's ever graced these fairways. But twice, on two occasions, Rory was left to rue two of rules breaches, which cost him. Now, he's just been in his press conference and he said, if I can keep the right side of the rule book, I may just win this week. Clearly, it's a course that suits him. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I'm glad you mentioned those, those penalties because... Uh by rights, he could have won two tournaments by now and, and, uh, and been right up there with Paul Casey and, and Martin Keimer. Uh, I mean, the way he hits it, there's no golf course on the planet that he can't play well on. So I think it just depends uh, on uh, whether he's getting rid of a, maybe a little bit of a Christmas, New Year's rust. But there's opportunities out there for him and he, he's going to take them for sure. Yep. Now, big American stars are no stranger to this tournament. We've seen Tiger Woods play here in 2012 and 2013. Phil Mickelson last year lit up the fairways with a memorable 63 en route to a very good challenge, ultimately uh, beaten by a shot by the champion Pablo Larathabal. But this year, we have a newcomer in Ricky Fowler, very exciting player, finished in the top five in all four major championships last year, Danny, but probably hasn't had the amount of wins that all his great play has warranted he's remodeled his swing with butch Harmon. what do you expect from ricky this week it's hard to tell in the first event of the year but such a solid player with such a great long game you'd expect him to do pretty well yeah i mean i've i've, I've just watched him hit a few balls on the driving range and uh, he's impressive he, he's more impressive than perhaps we thought he would be I, I know he's been working quite hard the last week uh over in vegas with, with his coach butch Harmon. Uh, the changes that he's made to his swing are appreciable. You can you can see a tangible difference uh, to his flight. It doesn't move so much in the air. Everyone's looking for him to go toe to toe with with uh, with Rory. <laughs> uh, I'm expecting him to play well. The golf course itself, it's not a mysterious golf course at all. So if you hit good good golf shots, you'll get rewarded. Uh, and 
you know, I think provided that the weather is, is behaving itself, there are going to be opportunities out there and he's just, he's too good to ignore a, uh, you know, a talent like that here. So hopefully he can feature this week. Indeed, not a mysterious golf course, but certainly a, a changed golf course over the years when this tournament launched in 2006. They've made dramatic changes since then in lengthening it, toughening it, adding bunkers. And actually, in, indeed, this year, some of the changes are, are really quite pronounced. On the, the two par threes, the fourth and the twelfth, we've seen the water brought more into play, as it has been on the second. And then there's been changes on the 16th. Just, just elaborate a little bit on those uh, developments, Danny, and why they were brought in this year. Okay, well, I mean, the, the one that I'm the most high on is, is hole number four. And for those of you who remember hole number four, it was a fairly straightaway, uh, sort of a rectangular green. Uh, what they've done is they've actually put a, a big tier now moving towards the water. And uh, I was out there checking the pin positions the other day. If you've got a flag that's on the right-hand side uh, and it's into the breeze and right to left, which it will be more than likely, you, you've turned what was a fairly average hole into a quite a unique hole, and I, I think it's going to play a big part in the week. Uh, hole number two, the green has now sort of curved more towards the water also. So if you're going to go for it in two and you're sliding the ball even a fraction off the green, the ball has a real opportunity now to run into the into the rockery. Not so much the water, but, but the rockery is, is just as bad, really. Um, hole number 12... Uh, has uh, a green extension at the front. So if the tee is forward, they may put the tee forward one day. If it's into the breeze with the front pin position, the ball may come back into the water. And that would be exciting because it means that the guys are going to have to uh, allow for that. Uh, and hole number 16, there's a, there's a minefield of bunkers down there now, which will certainly make them second guess their, their line off the tee. I think the, the bigger hitters with the right wind will still be able to take it on. Uh, but yeah, it, it could be, you, you could see someone come very unstuck on 16. Wow, well, it's a superb course, it's a superb field, and it's also a superb experience off the golf course, especially with the input from HSBC in this championship village. We have ambassadors from HSBC, the likes of Tim Hemman, the former tennis player, Gavin Hastings, the rugby legend. There's so much going on, Danny, not just for golf aficionados, but also the rest of the family who may, while they may enjoy the golf, it, it may not be their passion, so to speak. What else can visitors to this championship expect? Well, one of the, one of the best things, Robbie, is, uh, as you mentioned, you don't need to be a golfer to enjoy it. Um, I know uh, a lot of the families will, will bring the kids, the kids can run amok in the, in the village, there's loads for them to do. Um, the, I know I think it's on Friday that the ladies are promoted to get dressed up, uh, which, which is obviously uh, becomes almost like a day at the races then, doesn't it? And, and uh, uh, you could not know anything about golf and have a fantastic time just in the village alone. But uh, look, I'm sure that there's going to be enough good golf to entice people to go out there and watch as well. And luckily, we do have a man who knows plenty about golf, and I'm about to put him on the spot because I'm going to ask Danny for his predictions this week. Who you put your money on, and also someone that you'd say to a friend, yeah, he could do well, but a little bit more under the radar. Who are you picking? Robbie, I knew you were going to do this. I, I've been racking my brain trying to figure out who I like and who might be under the radar. I'm going to say, well, I'm going to say Rory because Rory's always, always there. Uh, I'm going to say Justin Rose because I've predicted Justin Rose the last time he was here and he came runner-up. My dark horse, you heard it first from me, is uh, Alexander Levy. I think uh, the young, yeah, there you go, the, the young, the young Frenchman. He uh, he's got a bit of a swagger to his step this week. He looks relaxed. Uh, he looks like he's had a good Christmas and uh, his ball striking is is highly regarded through the ranks. So there you go. That's my pick, Alexander Levy. Well, he's just picked my two picks, so I don't know what I'm going to do. I was going to go for Justin Rose, but I will go for the three-time winner, Martin Keimer. I'll tell you why. He hasn't had the best of luck these last couple of years at the Abu Dhabi HSBC Golf Championship, but no one golfer has played this course better. Keimer was 80 under par cumulatively for that four-year stretch where he won three titles and came runner-up to Paul Casey in 2009. So I think Martin Keimer, with a bit more preparation and a bit of form coming off the back of a really solid Ryder Cup and obviously players champion from last year and he won the US Open so impressively, I think he's going to get back into winning ways in Abu Dhabi. As for 
a slightly more dark horse player. He's not that dark horse, really. But Danny Willett, a winner recently in South Africa, is someone who's really been on the upswing of late and could have a very, very strong 2015 season. So those are our predictions. By all means, come down to the event. Enjoy a superb week of golf. There's loads to do around the Championship Village, and there's some brilliant players in this field to admire and maybe get some youngsters involved in the game in the Middle East. So from Danny Jakubowski, the Director of Instruction at the club and Golf Digest Middle East, we hope you enjoy what is sure to be a memorable 10th edition of the Abu Dhabi HSBC Golf Championship.